Is the C1001mm wave human detection sensor really a game changer? To find out, I'm going to perform seven tests, including a false triggering test, a vibration test, and testing it with different thin and thick plastic and wooden sheets. We will also see if it can detect humans on the other side of a wall. And guess what? We will perform all these tests on the Blink IoT application. So, along with the tests, you are also going to learn how to use the MMWave human detection sensor within IoT platform. These days, the C1001 MMWave sensor is getting a lot of attention worldwide. In just four days, my previous video on the C1001 MMWave sensor gained over 52,000 views because this sensor is different from other human presence detection sensors because it can accurately detect if someone is lying down. It can perform precise human life detection. It can measure how long a person stays in one place. It can report if someone has fallen. It can judge the sleep state, breathing and heart rate based on body movement during sleep. And it can even detect if someone is completely still. I have already shown all of this in a practical demonstration. So for the technical specifications of this sensor and how to operate it in different modes, you can watch my previous video. You can find a link in the description below. In the previous video, some people asked me if this sensor can detect the presence of static and active humans through walls and other materials. Another guy asked me if we can connect it to an IoT cloud platform for security purposes. So in today's video, we will cover both of these topics. So without any further delay, let's get started. This is my setup from the previous video. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. If your goal is only to implement security, then you don't need to use this relay. But if you also want to automatically control the light in that area along with security, then you can use this relay. Again, be very careful with safety measures. When the 110 or 220 volt AC supply is connected, do not touch the relay contacts as it can be extremely dangerous. This time, we won't be monitoring on a laptop. Instead, we will be using the Blink application on a cell phone for monitoring. So let's quickly create a dashboard on the Blink IoT Cloud. Log in into your Blink account and click on the new template. Write the template name. Select ESP32 as the hardware type. Set connection type to Wi-Fi and then click on the Done button. Now, if you want to make any changes, you can simply click on the Configure template. In my case, everything looks good, so I'm going to continue with the same hardware setup. Next. You can click on the setup data streams. Click on the new data stream and select a virtual pin. Write a meaningful name. For this particular project, you can leave pin, data type, minimum and maximum values to their default values. Zero means the sensor has not detected anyone and one means human presence. Finally, you can click on the create button. Our data stream is ready. You can also create data streams for monitoring if the detected person is still or active. But for this particular project, I think it's not necessary as I only want to detect the human presence and perform other tests. Anyway, once the data stream is created, then click on the devices. Click on new device. Click on from template. Select the template and then click on the create button. Copy these credentials because without these, you won't be able to connect your ESP32 to the Blink IoT platform. Open the program and paste it at the top of the program. Next, click on Edit Dashboard and from the widget box, add an LED to the dashboard and assign the corresponding data stream. Our dashboard is ready. If you want to use a notification widget or any other widget, then you will have to upgrade your plan. Anyway, the dashboard is ready. And now let's start with the Blink IoT application setup on the smartphone. Setting up the Blink IoT application in the cell phone is quite easy as we have already created the data stream. Now we only need to add the LED and assign it the corresponding data stream. Thank you. 
our application is ready and now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming First of all, if this is your first time using the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module, then you will also need to install the ESP32 board in the Arduino IDE. For this, you can watch my getting started video on the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. Installation of this library I have already explained in the previous video. In order to use your ESP32 or ESP8266 with a Blink IoT platform, you will also need to install the entire Blink library package for this simply Go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Type blink in the search box. You can see I have also installed this library. Don't forget to change the GPRS credentials. Rest of the code is exactly the same except these blink.virtualwrite functions because using this virtual pin I'm sending information about if someone is present or not. Now to upload the program, Simply select the ESP32 dev module. Then select the correct communication port and finally click on the upload button. If you focus this sensor on a running ceiling fan, it will cause false triggering. As you can see, I'm standing far from the sensor, but on the mobile, it shows human presence because the ceiling fan is on and the sensor is right below it. I'm sure you won't be using the sensor like this, but anyway, when installing this sensor on a watt, tilt it slightly downward so that the ceiling fan doesn't enter the sensor's detection area. Let's turn off the fan and see if the status is going to change. After turning off the fan, you can see that the false triggering has stopped. Now, I'll go near the sensor and let's see if it can detect me. This is amazing, so if you want to see 1001 mm wave sensor to avoid fast triggering, don't use it in front of a fan and other moving objects. In test number two, we will check if the mm wave sensor is affected by vibrations. I'm going to slightly shake the table. As you can see, the cell phone is showing human presence, even though I'm not in the detection area. So this test shows that you shouldn't use this sensor in places with vibrations or as a handheld human detector. To avoid false triggers, you need to use a C1001 mm wave sensor in a place without vibrations. You can use it as a portable security system, just don't use it in areas with vibrations. I'm really excited about this test because this time I'm going to put the C1001 mm wave sensor inside this box and we will see if it can detect me from inside the box. This test is for those who ask me if the MMWF sensor can penetrate materials or not. If it can successfully detect me, then we can hide this sensor anywhere and monitor people's presence. If you are enjoying the video, smash the like button and if you want to see more informative videos like this in the future, subscribe to the channel. So let's put the sensor inside the box. I have properly closed the box. On the cell phone, it shows no human presence. I can't wait any longer. I'm going to move closer to the sensor now. Oh my God, the sensor detected me from inside the box. This MM wave sensor is truly a game changer. I'm not going to stop here. In test number four, I'm going to place this plastic Range Rover model on top of the sensor. There is a good distance between the bottom and top. If the MM wave sensor can penetrate this, then it can easily penetrate acrylic sheets. So let's place the range roar on top of the sensor. On the cell phone, you can see no human presence. Now I'm going to move closer to the sensor. Oh my goodness, it also passed test number four. Now I can even use the sensor inside it and no one will ever know about my security system. Let's test it with a hard material now. For test number five, I'm going to use this thin hard wooden sheet. If the sensor can penetrate this, then I will try a thick wooden sheet as well. So let's place the sheet. On the cell phone, you can see the LD is off, which means no human presence. So now I'm moving closer to the sensor. This is simply mind blowing. It detected me from quite a distance. 
For test number six, I'm going to use this thick wooden block. If the MMWF sensor still detects me, then I will test it with a wall. So let's place it on top of the sensor and see. I tried a lot, but the sensor couldn't detect me, which means it won't detect humans behind a wall either. If you want to detect moving humans and objects through thick wooden sheets and walls, I recommend using the microwave sensor V2.0 because it can penetrate thick wooden sheets and also detect moving humans and objects on the other side of walls. If you want to learn more about this sensor, I will add a link in the description. Personally, I like the C1001mm wave sensor more because it has a very long range, it's highly accurate and it supports different modes of human detection. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.